Yo, what's going on guys? So this week we've got another list video plan for you. And a little while back we did a video called Three Mistakes That Every Beginner Makes. And I thought it'd be fun to do another version of that. Cover some different things from some different angles, some common mistakes that we see on the water all the time and what you could do to fix it. So let's get right into it. So the first mistake that I want to cover in this video is dangling. Now we've all seen this and that's that rider who whatever they do, when they do a send jump, when they do a kite low jump, whatever they're doing, they're always dangling. Their body's super stretched out. They've got a really open wide center of gravity. And uh, what happens here is, is when you do this, you literally can't do anything. So with kiteboarding or any sport for that matter, when you're doing tricks, you need to get a smaller center of gravity and we've covered this in a lot of videos but the more stretched out you are the harder it is to roll the harder it is to flip the harder it is to spin so if you can get tucked down into a ball you're gonna be able to rotate faster it's much easier you have a lower center of gravity and it's really gonna change the game for you so when you go and do a send jump whatever it is you're doing make a point to bring your legs in and if you want to take this one step further Go for a grab and do a tweak. So bring one knee into your chest and poke the other leg out. And what this does is not only does it demonstrate control, but it also feels more in control. So don't be that rider who's out there and every time you jump, you're just dangling with your legs hanging behind you. And the thing with dangling is this is usually paired with the kite high. So in that last video I did where people keep the kites above them like a parachute, you'll see people dangling. Uh, I'll show a clip of me where I'm doing a back roll. I'm super stretched out, I'm a little bit overpowered, and I keep the kite at noon and just totally eat it. And don't be this guy. Don't be that person who's super stretched out or just dangling ball of the kite. Even if you're not gonna go for a trick, just make a point to tuck into a ball so that you can start doing rolls, so you can start doing grabs, and you can start showcasing some control in your riding. And this is gonna make everything so much easier for you. And then just to cover a large number of bases uh, and elaborate on this tip, if you're an unhooked rider, make sure you keep that bar super close to your hip because the same thing applies. You wanna have that small center of gravity so you can spin around that bar or or do rolls or whatever it is. And if you're doing scent jumps, that doesn't really apply as much. The bar is always in the correct place right here in front of your hips. So you don't have to worry about that one as much. But these things all kind of work together. So having that low center of gravity, having that bar close, that allows you to stay in control of the riding because if you're stretched out, there's really not a whole lot that you can do. So that's tip number one, just make a point to get small. So mistake number two here is not riding in conditions that you don't normally ride in. Now what I mean is, if you're always riding your 12 meter and you're always out in moderately smooth winds, make a point to get out there and go ride on your smaller kites a little bit more. Go out in the gustier winds. Uh, and if you're that rider who only wants to ride lit on your nine, you'll never go out on your big kite, and you have no desire to go ride uh, anything bigger than a 10 meter kite, you're really missing out on all the benefits and advantages of riding in the light wind. And I did a video a really long time ago um, about, I think it was like heavy wind versus light wind or something like that, and we covered how there's three different skill sets in kiteboarding. So you have your light wind skill set, your high wind skill set and your moderate wind skill set. And these things work together. So for example, if you get really good at learning to ride in light wind and then you go ride in strong wind, oftentimes strong wind, it's gonna be a lot gustier. So there might be holes in the wind. So it might be like, maybe the wind is blowing like 15 to 25. So in these conditions, maybe you're really good when you're lit and you're riding powered, but what happens when the wind drops? Well, if you develop that skill set in the light wind, all of a sudden you know how to work your kite, you know how to use board speed, so you're in control. You can ride through the lulls and keep doing stuff and then adapt. And then uh, when it comes to riding in the stronger, gustier winds, I've always said that the best riders usually ride in the worst places because if you can learn to do tricks in a place like Hood River where the wind is super gusty and up and down, you can do tricks anywhere. So this is really going to prepare you for for that power riding, for going out and when you do actually get somewhere smooth where the wind is really consistent like Brazil or something like that, you're going to be a rock star because everything's going to be like cheating. It's going to feel like training wheels. 
So the whole point of this tip is just to be a well-rounded rider and practice in all the different conditions. And you know, there's different timings. So for example, when you're riding in light winds and you're on a big kite, maybe you're on a 15 or a 17 meter, you're gonna have to move that kite way in advance. So when you send a jump, as soon as you come off the water, you've really gotta start pulling on the front hand because it's gonna take forever for that kite to come around. And you'd be surprised, but you can actually do a lot of loop-based tricks, even with 17 meter kites. Uh, I have absolutely been out on numerous occasions doing like back roll kite loops with a 15 or a 17 meter kite. And likewise, if you're that rider who only likes to ride in like moderate winds where everything's easier, and maybe you're kind of scared of the faster kites because they're so whippy and fast, you get used to it. You get used to it really fast. And once you have that session where you're on that 10 meter, that nine meter, that eight meter kite, uh, being out there flying your kite with one hand, being able to just throw super quick loops and move the kite and like, it's kind of hard to explain how much fun it is to ride smaller kites. And I'd be lying if I said that small kites weren't more fun to fly. But on the flip side, doing tricks in light wind is actually more fun and more rewarding because there's less consequences. So you can try more things, you can learn new things. So one piece of advice that I've always given people is learn tricks in light wind, practice them in the moderate winds, and then when you're in the stronger winds, uh, save that for your bag of tricks where you know you're gonna land everything. So yeah, that's the whole point of this uh, tip here is just be a well-rounded rider. Get out there in all different conditions and develop your light wind skill set, your moderate wind skill set, and your strong wind skill set. Don't be that person who only goes out on one kite, one condition, and misses out on those extra windy days in the year. Because the truth of the matter is, as kiteboarders, we don't always get to ride all the time. We don't get to pick what Mother Nature is doing. We don't get to pick when we want to ride. So the more water time you can get, the better. Don't be stingy about conditions and go out and enjoy everything and ride for the conditions. If there's waves, ride in the waves. If you got flat water, learn to uh, ride in the flat water. So ride the conditions that you have as often as possible and make the most of it, even if it doesn't always go your way. All right, so just like our last video, the third mistake isn't really a mistake so much as a disservice to yourself. So one thing that I've noticed is most riders know how to do send jumps, but not many riders know how to do kite low powered tricks. And I don't mean doing like unhooked freestyle tricks even necessarily. I just mean learning how to load and pop and keep your kite right around a 45 degree angle so you can do powered tricks. And you can still do these hooked in so you can take the power out by sheeting out and make yourself a lot more comfortable. But these are super fun and it's almost like doubling your bag of tricks. So if you can do a scent back roll, try to uh, keep the kite at 45, load, and just work on just using your board speed to load and throw that front roll or throw a back roll. And the ax is gonna be a bit different. The way the trick looks and feels is going to be different. It's gonna be a bit more powered and uh, it's actually super rewarding to just like um, diversify your riding and be able to do these different things. And what this does, is just opens another door for a different style of riding that you might not be used to doing. And it's, it's one that it, it feels different, so it's less it's it's less dangly. You're not so much kind of going up and going forward. You're really you're really getting launched like in a forward direction, like you would off of a ramp or something like that. It, so the fun angle behind this is when you do tricks with the kite low, it feels a lot more like snowboarding or wakeboarding or a more traditional sport. Just having that more forward trajectory and that little extra power. The, the big con here is I will admit that it does take a little bit more strength. You do work your core a little bit more while you're loading your kite. It's a little bit harder on the body. As long as you're still hooked in, it's actually still pretty easy to do these things. If you want to take it to the next level and unhook from your kite, that's that's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. So the big benefit with learning to do kite low power tricks is not only are you kind of in a way doubling your bag of tricks by doing things on a different axis, but the best big air riders know how to do powered low kite tricks and be able to control that power, having that that board skill where you can generate that load and pop is gonna to translate to more air when you do go back to sending your kite. So if you are a big air rider, you'll notice that the best big air riders out there, they also tend to be some of the best freestyle riders out there because they're very proficient in all the different aspects of the sport. So if you wanna learn how to jump with your kite low, 
Uh, click the eye icon in this video. I'll link in a video I did a while back on how to pop properly. It was an unhooked video, but you don't have to unhook. So if that's not something you're interested in, you can still apply all of the same principles and just uh, stay stay hooked in with the bar sheeted in and learn how to control that power. But learning this skill set, learning how to load and pop for big air is going to get you a lot more big air on the water. So yeah, that's uh, that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a comment um, if you have any questions or anything like that. And uh, if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And please hit the subscribe button. That really helps me out a lot making these videos. And I will catch you next time.